Yes, my Amiga 1200 is in bits again, but with good cause. Because do you remember a couple of weeks ago when we built this accelerator? The Terrible Fire TF1230. This fantastic piece of kit, 68030 accelerator with 64 megabytes of RAM. You can fit 128 on these, but mine just has 64 mega RAM. The chip is clocked at 50 megahertz, although we were able to push it out to 60 with a bit of an overclock. But here's a question. What's missing from this picture? What's missing from this card that any other 030 accelerators from back in the day would have had? Well, as Stephen Leary, the designer of this board, aka Mr. Terrible Fire, as he wrote up here, predicted ignorant EAB comment, no FPU useless. And yes, while an FPU is more or less useless in an Amiga 1200, Strictly speaking, it is possible to add an FPU to this machine. Now, obviously there's no socket over here for it, but if I could draw your attention this way onto the motherboard, see this point here? This is intended for an FPU. Now, there was never an Amiga 1200 sold with one fitted here, but if we take a socket, and stick that on there, and then take an FPU, a Motorola 68882, and drop that into the socket. Well, that will be almost the next best thing, won't it? Yeah, it's not quite an FPU on our accelerator, but still adding an FPU to the machine. This is something that I have wanted to try for a while. So let's get the solder and iron out. Let's get that socket on, and let's see if this will work. Actually fitting this though, well this is my first time working with a PLCC socket such as this. Now obviously lining it up that's the easy bit but soldering those pins in there, well I'm not sure how well this will come out on the camera but there's this big plastic bit in the bottom it has lots of little legs that go across to the perimeter of the socket and that's all there to give it strength. The legs sit below that bit of plastic and what you're meant to do is solder each one of those legs individually. But for me, for where my soldering game is at, what I'm going to do is remove that bit of plastic in the bottom. Yes, that will weaken the thing, but it'll make my job of soldering an awful lot easier. Plus, it will make it a lot easier to tidy up afterwards. I'm going to have to use flux in here, and trying to tidy up flux around this plastic, well, I just don't think with cotton buds and IPA, I'd be able to do a very good job. So, that has to go. So, that is that removed. And you can see now that the socket is a bit more flexible, although hopefully when we get it soldered in place it will regain some of that strength. But just before we do stick this down, these pads here on the motherboard, well if I run the nail over them, you can maybe hear that those are raised, those have been tinned with a bit of solder. So just to make things a little bit simpler for myself, I'm going to just run over them quickly with a bit of braid, just so we have a nice flat surface here to work with. So just a little bit of flux on it. And I'm just going to try and work up any of that solder. This is one of the most nervous soldering jobs I have done in quite a while. And I suppose that is just because I am working on my Amiga 1200 here. This machine is what? A revision 2B dated 1992. This is 30 years old. So I want to be super careful and try not to make any mistakes. Right, that is nice and flat now. If I run my nail over it, you can't hear those bumps anymore. 
and that'll just make it a lot easier to position our socket. It'll sit nice and flat there and there's no chance of it you know falling off one of those bumps. Speaking of which, positioning this type of socket, PLCC, well unlike a dip package where pin 1 will be in one of the corners, pin 1 on this is in the middle of one of the sides. On the chip itself it would be denoted by a dot. You maybe see it there on Alice. And in fact, there it is there on our FPU. But to orientate the socket, I doubt you'll be able to make this out on the camera, but there's a little arrow just at that point. So our socket is going to go on something like that. That orientation isn't bad for me just dropping it there. But I am going to line it up properly. And just to help hold it in position while we get the first few pins down anyway. I'm going to use my old friend a bit of blue tack. And to be honest with you the reason that I like using this stuff to hold things. Especially things like this. Is that this is flexible. And so just to orientate it 100% I can stick it down like that. But still move the thing about to get it into the correct location. And that is pretty good at that. So plenty of our flux. I've got some solder on the tip of the iron. And let's see about getting this stuck down. So as I said, I've been wanting to fit this for a while. Uh, the whole idea of doing it, well, it came from a discussion over on Gadget UK's Discord server. One of the guys over there, and I can't remember exactly who it was, linked a post from the Exos forums, where a user by the name of Alan PPC, well, he discovered that with the TF1230, it is apparently possible to fit this FPU to the board and everything works. The assumption was that the accelerator would disable the onboard FPU socket the same way it disables the onboard CPU. But no, apparently it doesn't. So, something that I want to try for myself. And while there is very little software that is going to make use of this FPU, well, like any of these projects, why not? Why not just fit it and see what happens? Right, that is it on. I have a bit of tidying up to do to get rid of all that flux, but we can at least take our blue tack off. Hopefully that will be strong enough without that bit of plastic in the bottom. To be honest with you, I don't know how I would have done it with that in there. But let me tidy it up. I want to inspect it under magnification. Just going to buzz out all the legs as well, just to make sure they're connected okay. Then we'll drop the chip in and test it. Well the socket cleaned up okay, it looks fine under the magnification and all the points tested out okay. Or well the ones that I tested anyway. So I think we're good here. But the chip, I was having another look at this. I bought two of them actually. There's the other one there. And the two are identical. The numbering on them is identical. Is that odd? I'm not sure. But one thing that stands out here is that those are without doubt refinished chips. The surface of them, it just doesn't feel right. A bit of ace tone. Either they're getting better at this or I owe someone an apology. So the dot on the chip points down this way, lines up with that one marker there. That needs to go in like that. Okay, for the first test, I just want to see if the machine will start. So no accelerator, no hard drive. Just want to see if it boots to the kickstart screen. And yes, it does. So let's introduce a disk, sysinfo. Let's see if our FPU is recognized. And yes, we can see here FPU 68882. And if we click on speed, we should get an M flops score. 
and there it is 0.39 m flops so it certainly seems as if our fpu is working but let's reintroduce the accelerator and see if this makes any difference so same again let's just power on hopefully we still get to the kickstart screen yep we'll stick our disk back in and if we run the speed test this time well our MIPS jumps away up because of the accelerator but the AM flops that only increases ever so slightly up to 0 0.47 and to be perfectly honest with you I didn't actually expect that to increase at all because the FPU it doesn't get its clock from the accelerator the FPU shares its clock with the CPU on the motherboard this thing just runs at 14 megahertz when it's in this position now that said the clock of an FPU in the Amiga well that runs asynchronous to the rest of the system what that basically means is that that can run at a different clock speed to everything else and for anyone familiar with other accelerators from back in the day well those typically would have had an FPU socket on board but also had a socket on them to fit a separate crystal for that FPU now this chip here this is actually rated at 40 megahertz although we are only running it at 14 now but see just up here that is the crystal for the actual system that's a 28 megahertz crystal well 28 point something and what I want to try and do is we'll lift the clock pin of this chip to isolate it from the socket and we're going to run a little wire up to some point up around here where we could pick up that 28 megahertz signal and if everything works as I hope it will that will double the speed that this is currently running at so which leg on this do we need to lift and whereabouts on this board are we going to pick up that 28 megahertz signal well if we turn to the schematics for the Amiga 1200 U0 that is our FPU and granted this says 6881 we're using the 2 which is just an optimized version of the same thing totally pin compatible but down here pin 11 clock that is our CPU clock and looking at the chip pin 1 is here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so the second pin up on that right hand side but if we move over to the Amiga PCB Explorer there is our FPU socket on our board that second one up as you can see that is CPU clock signal now whereabouts are we going to get the 28 megahertz signal so back to the schematic you can see down here this is where the clocks are generated 28 megahertz that's the one we are looking for we can take it off the side of component E133 now finding that rather than hunting around the board for it we can go back to the PCB Explorer and search for E133 and take it off the top side capacitor there it is there and if we just hover over that again you can see that that is our 28 megahertz signal so we can take it off that pad of that component which on the board no there's not actually a component there in that position it's that position there and the top pod that's where we're going to take our signal from now we could potentially follow this down and there's a little via just at that point that we could maybe take the signal from just that point there but to be honest with you i just think it would be easier to run a wire from up here and bring it down following these traces that come down here we'll bring it down here and up onto the chip connect it off to that leg so it is that pin there that we need to bend out i'm just going to grab it with the tweezers carefully bend it i do not want to snap it off 
You can actually see, no, you can maybe not see it on the camera, but there's a stress line there already. So you're definitely not going to be able to bend these in and out too many times. And to be honest with you, that's why I bought two of these things. And we're just going to loop that over the top of the chip like that. And just to make sure that that pin we've lifted can't come into contact with the pin on the socket. I've put a little bit of black PVC tape just over everything. And let's just double check. So meter in continuity. Yeah, that's okay. Now it's not making contact. Right, let's run a wire. So we're coming off that pod there. A little bit of flux, and I'm just gonna put a bit of fresh solder on it. And we're gonna be using this wire, single core, k wire, or whatever it's called. And that's that bit done. I'm gonna take this wire down underneath the legs of Budgie here. I'll just help keep it nice and straight. Take it to about that point. I can put a wee spot of glue on this later or something to make it nice and neat. And then we need to take it over to that leg. Stripping this wire back is really easy. Just hold the end of it against the iron for a couple of seconds. And you can see that the PVC sheath just sort of recedes that wee bit. So we'll just turn up the leg. And then I'm going to have to do this right handed. So this is going to be a mess. I'm left handed if you haven't guessed by now. Nah, that's not too bad. That's it done. Let's test it. Okay, same as last time. Let's just power up, see if the Amiga starts. Looking good so far, and yes. We boot into SysInfo again, first with no accelerator. So FPU is still detected. Let's run our speed. It was 0.39 before and 0.6 so definitely faster it's not the sort of linear increase that i would have expected you know it's not running at twice what it was before it was 0.39 okay it's nearly there i suppose let's put the accelerator in and see how that affects the result so again let's just power up yep and we'll just put in the sysinfo again so fpu is still there alongside our O30. Run a speed test. It was 0.4 previously. 0.77. So yeah, almost linear scaling. We've doubled the clock speed coming to the FPU and it has more or less doubled the result in SysInfo. But still just 28 megahertz. As I said, that is a 40 megahertz part. Do you know what else was a 40 megahertz part? That CPU and as you know we've pushed that out to 60. What would happen if we disconnect that wire, bring it this way and connect it up to that 60 megahertz clock running that chip? Right where are we going to pick up this 60 megahertz clock? Well it doesn't make its way over to the edge connector. The furthest it gets towards our FPU is going to be this and if we pull up the pin out for an O30 well, that's looking at it from the bottom, so that's that sort of orientation there with pin 1 now at that position. And it's the fifth pin up on this side, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's that pin there that we need to make the wire off onto. Granted, the issue with doing this is that we are essentially going to tie the accelerator to the Amiga. It'll not just be as easy to remove. We'll just remove this wire. It's going to leave that there though. 
just because you know if this doesn't work well I'll have to reinstate that and let's see if this is going to work to be honest with you I have my doubts that wire is quite a bit longer than this one and there's a decent chance that our clock signal might degrade coming down that due to interference but we can only try right well let's start yep what about sys info well the fpu is still there let's run our speed test 11 mips and 0 0.62 it's slower how can that be that's our 60 megahertz clock coming over to this and it's only getting a score of 0 0.62 could it be the case that our wire you know the length of this is it picking up some sort of interference affecting that clock signal causing the chip to run slower you would have thought if there was something wrong with that clock coming over here that well the chip itself would just not work yeah 0.62 let me try something so when discussing this originally over on gadget uk's discord he recommended doing this so our clock signal we're going to take that through a 22 ohm resistor we're using this two pin connector here on the other side of that that is going to be ground the whole point of the connector is so i can easily disconnect the cable you know so i can remove the accelerator without having to desolder things and the whole point of having the ground alongside the clock signal is to use a twisted cable such as this this came off an old sensor out of an old windows xp machine so if it's good enough for a sensor it will be good enough for our clock and having the ground wrapped around the signal well the theory there is that that will help stop any interference i will put a bit of hot glue on this if this works you know just to make this more permanent help hold it all in place but that will connect there the blue wire is going to be our signal the black is the ground so that fits okay in there and there's just about enough room to bring our wire up the top of the accelerator and let's just run this straight down and make it off here blue wire is going to go onto that pin and i'll just terminate the black wire onto a ground somewhere around here right let's see if this is going to work will it make any difference to the result just left the disc in the drive let's just see if it boots yep away it goes so speed test 11 mips and 0.62 m flops that's starting to annoy me it is hideously unstable while it will boot into workbench here and you can do stuff you know let's uh run sys info again still 0 0.62 and you can try and run some fpu stuff this is a demo that requires the fpu to be fitted well you might if you're lucky get about 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes if it's from a cold boot but then it'll crash and once it starts crashing well you'll be lucky to get back into workbench so i'm thinking that our clock speed coming to this chip is just too much for it and what i'm considering doing here in fact what i want to do just to try is we will reduce the speed of our accelerator again we have 120 megahertz crystal fitted to that so let's take that off we'll put the 108 crystal back on and that will give us a clock speed of 54 on this chip and on this fpu and while i said you need the fpu to run this demo as you can see by the abysmal frame rate you also need a considerably more faster processor a lot of the fpu stuff while the minimum requirements will be 030 what they're actually looking for is an 060 
Okay, crystal is changed. Let's try it with a clock speed of 108 megahertz on the crystal, giving us 54 here and presumably 54 down this wire into the FPU as well. Okay, back in sysinfo, let's check the speed. I would expect the MIPS to drop down to about 10.4. Yep. M flops, 0.6. So that has reduced ever so slightly. It was 0.62, it's now 0.6. And that coincides with the slight drop in CPU clock. But I still cannot understand why taking the 28 megahertz signal off the motherboard and feeding that into this chip gives you a faster AM flops result in sysinfo. So I'm just going to leave this running for a while to see how stable it is now, or how stable it's not. We'll soon find out. And let's give the FPU something to do. Although there isn't an awful lot that you can do with an FPU in an Amiga such as this. Yes, we do have a nice fast 030 processor here on the accelerator, but the majority of software that I would want to run that needs the floating point unit, well, it's also looking for a considerably faster processor, something like an 060. This demo though, Jesus Christ Motocross, well, it needs an FPU and it runs really well on the O30. Although all its FPU stuff, it pre-calculates. So I think that's actually the first time it's made it to the end of that demo. Let's give it something else to do. How about drawing a fractal? So again, this software requires the FPU. This will not start if you don't have that chip installed. It will draw us a nice fancy picture. Um, black hole. The only thing is, as you can see, it will take its sweet time drawing it. Okay, it's finally finished drawing us a nice picture. That took about nine minutes, I think, altogether. So it's not exactly quick. Is the system still running though? I'm almost scared to try and move that mouse. Yep, seemingly still running. Well, it's been running for a good hour, maybe an hour and a half actually, and everything seems stable. So it seems just slightly reducing the clock speed on the accelerator. That's all it needed. I would still like to try and understand though why 
this FPU result under sysinfo with the now 54 megahertz clock coming into it. Why is that result less than what we've seen with the 28 megahertz clock coming off the CPU? So if anyone has any ideas about that, please let me know. It's currently processing what it needs to here for that other FPU required demo. Uh, impossible, you call this one. And rather accurately named because it's almost impossible for this machine to run it. I suppose the only other thing I would like to try and do here with the FPU would be rather than taking the clock signal through this wire, we could fit a separate crystal beside the FPU. You know, this is meant to be a 40 megahertz part, so we could fit a 40 megahertz crystal beside that and just feed that clock straight into this chip. But look, for the purpose of this video, I think it's long enough, so we'll just leave it as it is for now. I wanted to see if we could add an FPU to the 1200 and have that work alongside the TF1230. And I think we've proved that yes, that works fine. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed what you've seen. If you did, I would appreciate a big thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG and I'll see you next time.